and I shall ask if we could all rise. If we could all rise. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we shall carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again that he might be Lord both for the dead and of the living. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. I am the first and the last. I am who he lives and was dead and behold I am alive forevermore and I have the keys of death and also the key of hell. Because I live, you will live also and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, no crying, no pain, for the first thing are passed away. Amen. We will be following the order of service which is there with us. And now we come to our first hymn. Through all the changing scenes of life.
and kindly seated. Now we come to our prayer. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we turn to you in the sorrow and grief of our bereavement. We pray that we may find the strength we need in your sustaining grace. So that even as we mourn the death of one whom we knew and loved, we may not be overcome by this trial, but we may hold fast, trusting in your goodness and mercy. Father, assure us that death is not the end of those who trust in you. And may our hearts be so composed in the Holy Spirit that all fear and bitterness may be swallowed up in the light and peace you give to your troubled children, O oh God. So, Father, help us to fix our eyes unto you and to trust in you, O oh God, and also to put our hope in you. Help us as we come together as a family in this thanksgiving service. Help us to know that you live and you also present in our midst. So Father, hear our prayer. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, we come to the elegy, which is there in the order of service that we have. And now the time is given to the Grand United Order of Odd Philos. Good morning, church. First and foremost, the officers of the Grand United Order of Art Fellows would like to express our deepest condolences to the family and friends of Brother Hilton Sintel and Clifton, formerly known as Trevor. I hope we don't mourn. Trevor had a good life. So I would say we are here to gather. We are gathered here to celebrate the life of Hilton St. Elmo Clifton, formerly known as Trevor. Trevor was born on the 1st of October, 1949, to Cyril and Dorothy Clifton of Greenhill. He was his second child and first son. 
He grew up in Green Hill and attended the Westland Primary School. After his primary education, his parents sent him to Union Island to learn trade with Mr. Mack as a carpenter. He excelled at his work. Trevor stayed in Union Island for some time, where he met Jimmy. They were friends up to his passing. He and Jimmy walked all over the Grenadines. They even went and put down quite a few buildings in Trinidad and Tobago. He branched off in the late 80s, early 90s, doing his own business. Just to mention one of the contracts he got, he was the contractor for government to repair all the police station nationwide. That time he resided in Old Montrose. Trevor met the love of his life while residing in Old Montrose and they got married. He got married to Mary Archibald on Christmas Eve, 1994. Their union was responsible for eight children of which two of adop was adopted. Trevor loved his family, his brothers, his sisters, his children, and was very generous and caring to them. Always with a smile, always gave a joke. Trevor had a passion in social life for dominoes. He would play anywhere, anytime. No tournament will miss him. He played matches, tournaments, all over St. Vincent and the Grenadines. He played along with his first team, Mary J. Stars. And then he went over to Firehard, a team which he captained for some time. He also captained St. Vincent and the Grenadines to the 2003 Pine Hill Dairy Regional Competition in Barbados. Uh, Trevor was a member of the Grand United Order of Odd Fellows for a very long time. Trevor joined the Lodge just one month after his 18th birthday in 1967. He spent 57 years with us, three quarters of his life and half of the life of the existence of the Lodge. Brother Clifton served the Lodge well. He was an officer I could always depend on. He was elevated to the Grand Master's Council number 595 in 2004, and then he was elevated to the Patriarchy number 312 in 2010. Brother Clifton was a very dependable officer. Anything I want done, just say. Say, Brother Kwashi, just say. Trevor was hospitalized for the third time on the 1st of May, 2024. It was a difficult time. It came unexpected. Um, the third time he had a, a clot in his brain, a small aneurysm, which caused a stroke on his left side that gave him a heart attack. It was a trying time for me. Me and Trevor spoke every single day, twice a day. Brother Clifton passed away on the 10th of May at 2.27 uh, 2 p.m. in the afternoon in my presence. Farewell, my brother. Farewell, my friend. May God bless and keep you until we meet again. Thank you.
Thank you, uh, my brother. And now we come to the tributes. And now I call upon uh, Jasmine uh, Prescott and the family to come up for the tributes. Praise God. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, soon coming King. I felt the condolences goes out to my sister Emily and George and family. Extended families, the Clifton family, relatives and friends on the passing of our dear Trevor. Please know that God is in control of everything. The same God that is on the mountain is the God in your body today. So be encouraged, his wife and his children. God blessings on you all. Don't lose faith. God is good. Praise God. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain. You've got peace of mind like you never know. But things change when you're down in the Don't lose faith, for you never alone. For the God of the mountain, He's still God in the valley. When things go wrong, He. The God of the day is still God in the night. We talk about faith when we are up on the mountain. Talk comes so easy when life at its best but it's down in the valley of trials and temptation that's where your faith is really put to the test for the God of the mind The 
God of the dead is still God in the night. The God of the dead is still God in your night. Thank you, uh, my sister, for that uh, beautiful voices. And uh, we thank her for that uh, a tribute, solo tribute this morning. And we thank God that God never changed and he is still God until today. And now, I think that is all from the tributes. And now we come to the scripture reading. I call the readers to, to come up. Just move. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Today's scripture is from Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lay down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. The second scripture reading is taken from Romans chapter 8, verses 31 to 39. And it begins, What shall we say then? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that conde condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who even is at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that love us. 38 says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life 
nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Gospel reading is taken from the Gospel according to John, John chapter 14, comments reading from verses 1 to 6, and then move on to verse 27. John chapter 6, chapter 14 from verses 1 to 6 and verse 27. We shall rise for the reading of the Gospel. It reads, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, Believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Verse 27, it says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. This is the gospel of Christ. We shall remain standing by singing our hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
Amen. 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 Kindly seated. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Gracious and eternal God, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, you created the heaven and the earth through your holy word. And we know that you will continue creating new things in our lives only through your word. We come to you at this time to listen to you, to listen to your word. Father, help us with thy word and fill our hearts with your word, O oh God. The word of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Before I say a few things, at this time I like to introduce myself. I know some of you know me, and most of you didn't know me. My name is written there in the order of service on the front page. And it's a difficult name to pronounce. I'm from Fiji. In uh, the South Pacific Islands. I am so blessed to be part of this region. And now is the third year for me in this beloved nation of St. Vincent. I'm here for the missionary purpose under the Methodist Church here in St. Vincent. I will not stay here for the whole of my life. One day I'll go back to my beloved lands, which is Fiji Island. Fiji located in the Pacific region, close to Australia and New Zealand. So it's a good experience for me and my family to be here in this uh, nation for the past two years and uh, today is my third year, 2024. And we thank God for giving us life as we travel thousands of miles to reach this nation. And I love singing. So I know that most of you love singing also. So we should know that we will not live here for the rest of our life.
I can say that we are all strangers in this world. Whether I live in Fiji or live in St. Vincent, we are all strangers. Because we will not live here for the rest of our life. One day, we will go to a place which was prepared to all of us. And today I just like to share a few things from our gospel reading. The gospel according to John chapter 14 from verses 1 to 6 and also verse 27. I will be focusing on these words of Jesus Christ. He told his disciples that day that he is the way, the truth, and the life. This passage stands as a great rock in the scriptures. I know that all of us facing some difficulties this morning for the loss of one of our family members. And sometimes the loss of our family members stealing our joy and causing us pain. This passage, John chapter 14, if we believe and receive this message of John 14, it will be able to scrap them all away and restore us joy and peace. This uh, passion, if we believe, it will restore joy and peace in our hearts. Firstly, in verse 1, I can say that there are fears to escape. To understand chapter 14 well, we have to go back to chapter 13. Jesus and his disciples have just finished observing the Passover in chapter 13. They enjoy a pleasant meal together. And after which, Jesus donned a towel and washed his disciples' feet. That is in chapter 13. Jesus tell his disciples, he tells them that he will be trained. He will be betrayed by one of their own member, own number. He also tells them that he is going away. That is all in chapter 13. So the 
the disciples, they were worrying by themselves. Who will be doing these things to betray our leader? And also, he says that he will be going away. They are in fear of what the Lord has, has, uh, has told them. And Jesus tried to let them know. And for them to understand that they will face difficulties. Before it happened, Jesus already told them for them to be prepared that those things will come. That those times of difficulties and challenges will come for them to prepare themselves very well. So when the disciples still in fear of what the Lord has mentioned to them, here comes chapter 14, which I have read this morning, to answer their questions and their fear. Here comes chapter 14 to give them hope for the future. I just like to explain chapter 13 for us to know that chapter 14 is the answer of what happened in chapter 13. The answer to the disciples fear and hopelessness for Christ let them know that and give them hope for the future. So brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to remember as we live in this world, there will be tough times will come our way. In John chapter 16, verse 33, it says, I have said this to you so that in me, you may have peace. In the world, you, you face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world. Amen? Yes. Our Lord conquered the world. Whatever circumstances of life, whatever difficulties of life that we are going through, remember the Lord Jesus Christ already conquered the world. This reminds us that trials are part and parcel of human existence, a part of this world. And we should expect that hard times will come. Last year, I lost my mother. It's not an easy time, am I? But I look into the word of God in this chapter 14 of John. And I know that this is a plan of God and no man can stop it. It's not easy to lose our loved one, our loved one. But we should 
prepare for that. We should know that there will be the time that one of our members of our family will go back home. We should expect that. Even our lives. However, my brothers and sisters in Christ, in the midst of our difficulties, we can have peace. In the midst of our difficulties and trials, we can have peace only through Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Only in him, he said, I give you peace, which the world cannot give it to you. We should know that everything in this world are limited. And also our lives. So the Bible clearly mentions things that not yet come. We should prepare for it. And also we should prepare our lives well. Because one day we will depart from St. Vincent. We will depart from our comfort home. One day we will depart from this life to another life. We should prepare for that. My brothers and sisters in Christ, Whatever circumstances of life that you are going through right now, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11 verse, 20, verse 28, Come to me, all that you are weary and carry heavy burdens. I will give you rest. And also in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Jesus cares for you. So the best plan of escape from the fears is to run to the safe arms of Jesus Christ. So you are never safer than when you are in the arms of Jesus Christ. That is the safest place ever. Only in the arms of Jesus Christ. Because he will take care of us in this life. And also after this life, he will continue taking care of us. Secondly, there is a faith to embrace. There is a faith to embrace. The word believes means to think to be true, to be persuaded of, to have confident in. In this verse, belief speaks of two kinds of faith, which is sustaining faith 
and also saving faith. Believe in God. This is the kind of faith that will bring us through the valleys of life. This kind of faith help us to know that God is in control of everything from heaven and on earth. We should know that. That God controls everything. In Hebrew chapter 11 verse 6. It says. Without faith it is impossible. To, to please him. For who, whoever would approach God must believe. That he exists. And that he rewards those who seek him. God rewards those who seek him by faith. We should know that the promise of God never fails. The promise of God never fails. He promised everything from the Old Testament. It was fulfilled in the New Testament. He promised that a girl or a young lady will conceive a baby boy and the savior of the world. It happened. He promised everything. In the Old Testament, from his prophet's mouth, it happens. And Jesus himself promised that he will go and he will come back. And it will be happen. The promise of God never fails. In Romans chapter 4 verse 21 it says being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. God will do what he had promised. In Romans chapter 8 verse 28 we know that all things work together for good. For those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the promise of God never fails. It will happen. And also the power of God never fails. From the beginning... Today and in future, the power of God never failed. Jesus said, all power and authority from heaven and earth has given to me. That is the word of Jesus from his lips. That he has the power and authority to do whatever he wants to do. So this is the power of God, which is death. When someone died, we have no power to raise that person again. Only God himself did that to Lazarus after Lazarus in his tomb after four days. Only Jesus can do that. No other. Only the power of God raised people from the dead. Heal people from the sickness. Affected them. Only the power of God. So we must believe in the power of God. So brothers and sisters in Christ. 
If you can ever learn to trust God completely without reservation, reservation then you have the very tool you need to loosen fierce grip on your life. As soon as you come to the place where you know God will do as he has promised and you live life up to him and his will, then you are free. Brothers and sisters, we must trust God. We must put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the second part of faith, which is saving faith. Believe also in me, Jesus say that word. So we should know that it is not enough just to believe that there is God. After all, we should know that the devil also believe that there is God, but they are not saved. The devil also knows that God lives, but they have no power to overcome the power of God. In James chapter 2 verse 19, you believe that God is one. You do well, even the demons believe. Brothers and sisters in Christ, to be a saved, to be saved, a person must believe in Jesus Christ. And his word. So that is very important. We know that. In, uh, in John chapter 6 verse 47. It says very truly I tell you. Whosoever believes has eternal life. In Acts chapter 16 verse 31. It says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household will be saved. So brothers and sisters, our faith in Jesus Christ is very important. Thirdly and lastly this morning, we should know that there is a future to envision. Jesus said, in my father's house, there are many dwelling places. We need to remember that we are not home yet. We should know that. While the troubles and trials we face are part of this earth, they will not follow us where we are headed. They will end up all in our grave. None of them will follow us. Trials and troubles and difficulties we are facing in this world. All will end up in our grave. Only one thing will follow us. Only our faith and our relationship in Jesus Christ. Everything will end up into our grave into our grave. Our, the difficulties that you are facing right now, the trials, all will end up in our grave. Only one thing will follow us, which is our faith and our relationship in Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, we are just pilgrims and strangers. And we should know that everything that we have will not follow us to that place. Even our comfort home, our comfort car, or whatever, none of them will follow us.
I just like to share one uh, short story of this great man, Alexander the Great. He is one of the richest men in the world during his time. He also rules part of the world during his time. When he about to die, he called all his servants and he told them, when I die, when you lay me in, in my coffin, you make two holes on the side of my coffin, two holes. Then his servants asked him, Sir, we cannot do that. No, you must do it. Okay, what is the meaning of that two hole beside your coffin? To put my hand outside for all the people to see my two hands. Okay, what is the meaning of putting your hands, both hands, outside? For them to know that I brought nothing into this world and I will take nothing with me. And secondly, you should bring all my possession and put it on the both sides of the road to my grave. Line them up there, put them all, bring it out. All my possession. And uh, his servants ask him, so what is the meaning? We cannot do that. He told them, you must do what I'm telling you to do. What is the meaning of putting your possession both sides of the roads to your grave? And he told them, for all who come to my funeral to share that possession, none of them I can carry with me. So that is the words of one of the greatest leader in this world during his life, during his time that he knows that he will not be able to carry anything with him to his grave. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you and I will come back to take you to the place where I am. So only Jesus himself will waiting for us at the end of this journey. Everything we left behind, only Jesus himself will waiting for us at the end of this journey. So when there is still breath, try to look for Jesus and get hold of him because he is the only person will waiting for us at the end of this journey. Just to come to the end of this reflection this morning, I just like to ask a few questions. What are you afraid of today? 
Some people are afraid when death come to his or her doorsteps. And that is what I am faced so many years ago. When I visited one of, I can say one of my members back in Fiji, but this person, when I visited him, he always ran away from me. He didn't like me to, vis to visit him. So before I preach, every Sunday I used to visit this person. An old man. He said, I, I, I pray from home. I have my, my service from home. It's no need for me to come to the church. Okay. So sometimes when I come to his place, he closed the door. So I just pray through the window for, for, for him to listen from inside. Okay, you just listen from inside. I just prayed from here through the window. So he listened from inside. I pray from the window most of the time. One time he admitted to the hospital. And the room he was laid is close to the mortuary where the dead bodies restored. So I, when I when I come in that day, so one of his grandson look at me, and he called, "Rev, Rev, come inside." And his grandfather called me also, Rev, come and pray for me. And I have a small joke. Okay, I will pray for you, for you to die. I just joke to him. Because every time I come to you, you rejected me. You close the doors. I just pray from the window. So now you are afraid of death? When I'm praying, the Holy Spirit spoke into my heart that God will give him another chance. So when we finish praying, I mention it to him. The Holy Spirit spoke into my heart to let you know that he will give you another chance. You will walk from this place to your home in good health, but change your life. And when I come to him another day, in his place, he gave his life to Christ. Because he was afraid of death that day. Because he not yet gave his life to Christ. That is why he afraid of. Because he know when he died that day, he go direct to hell. That is why he was afraid of that day. So, so the question, what are you afraid of today? We must afraid of hell. Because hell is real. We must run to Jesus. That is one thing we must afraid of today. To go to hell. Because that is forever, is not limited. That lake of fire is forever, and it's not limited. It's forever. We must afraid of hell and run to Jesus for us to be in a good place. Secondly, what are you trusting in to take you to heaven today? What are you trusting in to take you to heaven? You trusting in your good house? You trusting in your good car? You trusting in your big money that you have to take you to heaven? No one of them will take you to heaven. 
Only your faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Will take you to heaven. Only your faith in Jesus Christ alone. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to my Father except through me. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may God bless all of you. And may his word bear fruits in our hearts. Amen. Now we come, we continue with our order of service. We come to our Apostle Creed. We may all rise at this time. We may all rise at this time. Together with our Apostle Creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Now we come to our hymn, Tempted and Tried.
Kindly seated. Now we come to our Thanksgiving prayer. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Praise be to you, O God, our Heavenly Father who created us in your own image for eternal fellowship with you. Praise and thanksgiving to you, O Jesus Christ, our Lord and our God, who have overcome the softness of death and open the kingdom of heaven to all believers and are now seated at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father in heaven. Praise and blessing be to you, O Holy Spirit, God and our Comforter, who bear witness within us of our acceptance with the Father and have become the pledge of our eternal inheritance. We bless your name for the life of our brother, our father, our grandfather, whom we today lay to rest. We give you thanks for the joy and the blessing his life has brought to others for his service 
to his generation according to your will and for your every happy remembrance of his life, O oh God. We bless you for your mercy and goodness which have followed him all the day of his life. And now the trials of this world are over and death itself is past. So Father, we pray that you will receive him into your perfect kingdom and bring us with all who have lived and serve you to serve you faithfully to the fullness of your eternal joy, O oh God. So Father, help us to continue to fix our eyes unto you, to continue worship you and glorify you, because one day you will call us back. So, Father, thank you for everything. May your blessing and rest and peace be upon his family. And all who gathered here today, may your blessing from heaven upon each and every one of them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Eternal God, we have made, you have made us all and hate nothing that you have made and have given your son for our redemption. We command our brother Hilton, Shane, Elno, Clifton, to your perfect mercy and wisdom, eternal rest grant unto him. Amen. Together our Lord's prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now we come to our last hymn for today, and can it be? Let us all rise and sing our hymn.
in you that which is pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Phone. Give the money phone. Give the money anything. 
Also. No, sir. Okay, we, we are about to come to the end of our farewell Thanksgiving service. We know that neither death or life, no things present, no things to come. Our height or depth or any other creature can separate us from the love of God which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. We know that if this earthly house of our tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building from God, a house which not made with hands, which is eternal in the heavens. Since our brother has departed out of this life, and Almighty God in the mercy has taken him to himself, we therefore commit her body, his body to the ground, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, and earth to earth. Now we hope the resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all comfort, Raise us up as we pray from death of sin to the new life of righteousness. That when we shall depart this life, we shall be found acceptable in your sight. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Tolong ibang Oke. Careful, eh? Careful, Careful, Careful,
Come sunny. Wait, I'm gonna show you. Watch my direction, eh? You're going to up and down. Now nah, you land up and right. Put on your raise up and put on your weight. Measure go. Raise back up a bit. Yeah. Talk to me real hard. Hmm? Real hard talk to me. Wait, wait. I don't fix it. Ready? Ready? You sure you think I'm going to go, sir? Yeah. Be ready. I'm going to go. 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 Yeah? Why are you in this behind? Build up for mommy and then it's anywhere in there. Ready, head? Ready, head? Okay, brothers and sisters in Christ, we come to our last prayer for today. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Gracious and eternal God, we thank you for bringing us together at this time. Father, we ask you to support us all the day long of this troubles life. Until the shadows lengthen, the evening comes, the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant unto us a safe lodging, holy rest and peace. At the last, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus and the love of God the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Bring the flowers. Let us crown. Okay, I need the family. I need the family.
Ok, acho que gostei da ideia. Viva ali. Ok, logo isso aí. Thank you.